welcome to another Coffee Time where we look at the news on the Daily Mail website. Let's have a look. Uh, can't do the lead story. <laughs> uh, oh god. There we go. Political news. Jeremy Hunt, that ain't rhyming slang, has revealed that he tackled the flea problem that plagued Liz Truss. <laughs> he did this by replacing the carpets at vast personal expense. Yeah, the Chancellor lives with his family in the same flat above number 11 that was inhabited by Truss during her brief spell as PM. Um, she's got a book out um, called 10 Years to Save the West and in it she complains about fleas. Um, and she, she suggests that it was Boris Johnson's dog it may be to blame. And um, overnight, Hunt at the IMF. And there he is. Here he is explaining, I replaced all the carpets at my own expense. Now, all I can deduce from this is it was, it was uh, Liz Truss who had fleas. <laughs> I've not I've still not forgiven her for what she's done to our mortgage. And here could yeah could well it could be either of those two, couldn't it? It could be Dylan Orth, our ex fluffy haired leader, Boris Johnson that's responsible. Um but yeah, so Liz Truss has fleas. That's that's all I'm getting from it. Oh here's a a male plus story which we can't cover because it's behind a paywall. It asks the it asks the big question. As ben, Flynn, ben Affleck's daughter comes out as Finn, why are so many celebrities' children trans and non-binary? I'll tell you why. Because they want to appear more interested than they actually are. That's it. That's it. Oh, good news, everybody. It's a shortage of life-saving drugs. Do you know what? I blame Brexit. I blame Brexit for it. But yeah, this is... The government has been urged to carry out a review of the UK's broken medicine supply chain. And, um, oh, we've got, look, this is, uh, there's loads of stuff, there's loads of stuff. I imagine some of you old farts watching this are probably, are probably in trouble. Uh, Diamox, that's, that's going to be out. There's 13 pages of this stuff to get through. Let's see if metformin's okay. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. M, 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 M. Ah, that's all right, but methadone. You get out of trouble if you got... Yeah, so if you, uh, if you like your drugs, medicinal drugs, you could be in trouble. But yeah, this uh, freedom of information request uh, from uh, drug companies sees it as impending shortages. And this is doubled from 648 in 2020 to 1,634 in 2023. So, yeah. No more drugs for you, Sonny. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh... Okay, let's go to court news. Let's do some court news, shall we? This is Lawrence Holden. Uh, he's an accountant. And he... Well, he was um, caught stealing £334,000 from his boss. Yeah. He was caught using his employer's PayPal account to steal the cash over a three-year period. Here he is. So, uh, yeah... Don't don't give him a job because we'll take you to the cleaners. Bosses at Influence Fashion, a wholesale clothes empire based in Cheat Mill in Manchester, where Holden had worked for several years, uh, had to contact insurers to get the money back, and they were still left fifty thousand pounds out of pocket. He admitted fraud of um, three hundred thirty-four thousand eight hundred forty-four pounds between July twenty eighteen and June the thirtieth, twenty twenty-one. And he was jailed for three years at Manchester Crown Court. 
where the judge accused him of greed and living beyond his means. I mean, he's also facing the proceeds of crime hearing. That means um, they'll look into his finances and, and you know get the rest of the money back. But yeah, he he blamed family priorities for stealing the money. I like that. Why did you steal it? Family priorities. And yeah, he used the funds to buy a seaside holiday home and a Range Rover because those are his priorities. <laughs> Remember, crime doesn't pay, folks. Uh, and yeah, he was um, he was a popular and dig diligent member of staff. But um, yeah, he was light fingered, though. That's the, that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> Um, yeah, he also purchased a, a static caravan. There you go. Maybe that was the holiday home. Anyway, so yeah, don't do that. Meanwhile, somebody else who's uh, who was caught stealing was a member of the Sainsbury's staff. Yeah, this is Naim Kidofu. Right, this person had worked at the supermarket for twenty years, but found themselves. He found himself fired. Right, this is at the. He was he was doing um, the the end of the night shift at Romford Sainsbury Superstore uh, when he selected a zero bags used option in the self service checkout as he packed up his shopping at the end of the night shift. Um, but yeah, he'd inadvertently stolen from some bags for life. Not his shopping, bags for life. Wait a minute, I can feel a sneeze coming on. I get I get terrible hay fever. It's terrible. So yeah, he's he was hauled in front of bosses who sacked him after watching CCTV footage of the incident. And they decided that the supermarket could no longer trust him. But yeah, Mr. Dofu, who's lived and worked in the UK for nearly two decades, worked night shift, uh, worked as night shift assistant at the East London store from June 2003 till he was fired in October 2022 for gross misconduct. That the tri tribunal was heard. Right. However, his claims of unfair dismissal were thrown out by a judge who said it was very hard to argue with the decision to dismiss him after the theft of the bags which are sold to customers for either 30 or 65p. But yeah, he did his personal shopping at the end of the night shift where he bought £30 worth of food, but he didn't pay for the reusable bags. Yeah, but and selected the zero bags option instead. Instead of buying, paying for the bags, and um, yeah, Mr. Doffu did accept Sainsbury's had a zero tolerance approach to theft, but insisted he was tired and unaware of what he was doing when he took the bags without paying. So there you go. You so he's a he's his appeal for for that was dismissed. So there you go. This is this is a Sainsbury's bag for life. And indeed, live well for less. Mr. Dofu, he's out of a job because of it. So you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. Now, this is a story. This was a big scam story that was busted. Um, police have stormed a number of airports across the UK to break up, break up a global cyber scam, which they reckon has defrauded over 70,000 Brits. Uh, the website called Labhost had been used to defraud victims on an industrial scale, but it was managed to be infiltrated by the Met Police, which has led to 37 arrests around the world. Uh, the site was set up in 2021 by a criminal network, which enabled criminals to create their own scam websites designed to trick innocent victims into revealing their personal information. So it's like a like phishing website, so you get your passwords and bank details and whatnot. By the beginning of 2024, more than 40,000 fraudulent sites have been created through Labhost, which generated just under a million pound in payments from criminal users, which that, that paid a monthly subscription fee. But yeah, they reckon as many 70,000 victims were scammed, and they obtained 480,000 card numbers, 64,000 PIN numbers, and more than 1 million passwords globally. And that has been smashed. Thankfully, 
which is good and come on Daily Mail website uh, it's it doesn't want to do the rest of the story uh, yeah so this was the site it allowed you to generate fake websites but then it was seized by the Met Police in the they are arresting some of the people behind it and grabbing their electronics so yeah so you could just log in and it enabled you to create scam net network uh, networks websites via the network and yeah three hundred dollars a month as a subscription for the service wow there you go very organized crime uh, what else have we got uh, good news the Met, Met Metropolitan Police are the least trusted police force in England by women <laughs> and faces a monumental struggle to rebuild this relationship with the public in the wake of the Sarah Everard murder and other high profile cases yet yeah, that was a new study that's been published today uh, of course the of course it's been labelled uh, institutionally racist, misogynistic and homophobic, they've got all three this is a report by Baroness Casey um, and uh, yeah so it's uh, not looking good for the Met Police and it's old Mark Rowley who's uh, who's in charge now after Caressida Dick why is she no caresses a dick? Uh, yeah, but it was it was Rowley who said that they'll be prosecuting something. That, was it? Wasn't it something like ten police officers a week for the foreseeable future? Ping. Uh, what else have we got? That's not a good story. Here you go. This is why we need to uh, give Scotland their independence and build a wall around it to keep all the stupid in. I guess we put file this under gender. Woo woo! Uh, Scottish primary schools have appointed children as LGBT champions and are being encouraged to ask children as young as four if they're gay, lesbian, or transgender. You couldn't make this shit up. Um, uh, schools are setting up LGBT clubs and gender and sexual orientation alliance groups, apparently. This is uh, in a report run by The Telegraph, which the the Daily Mail has, uh, has uh, have nicked. So there you go. And that, and that, and that great. <laughs> this comes after the CAS review into the NHS Gender Identity Service, which has raised lots of concerns about the whole uh, gender woo-woo cult. And it is a cult and social contagion. It's, if you don't believe, ooh, you, you're in trouble. But yeah, it's, it, Scotland seems to be following uh, Canada's path on this, which is is frankly quite bizarre. And asking any age school children about their sex or sexuality, it's 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 Jimmy Savile, isn't it? We're we're ending in it's like Jimmy Jimmy Savile never happened. Um, it just makes you feel uneasy, doesn't it? But there you go. Meanwhile, um, let's 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 talk about a really shit story. Uh, this is we're going to uh, Amstead Norris, which is a, a part of the river in Bank. Is it in Berkshire? Uh, enraged locals in the village, right? 
right, have, have been putting up hilarious signs because of the various sewage spills that have been happening to their part of of the river. Uh, one sign uh, is up. Um, says uh, again, I've got to get it angled properly. It says that this is a Poonami area, no splash zone because of the quality of the of the water. And again, this one says, uh, this is not rainwater, this is sewage, no splash zone. Nice, charming, I'm surprised they haven't all got... Yeah, this is the village of Hampstead Norris in Berkshire. And this one says, uh, more species, less feces, the river Pang. More like the river Pong, am I right or am I right? And this one just says, uh, Lambourne shit show. Oh dear. Yeah, that don't look good, does it? That's not good. And there is a health warning up about the raw sewage. And again, this in the UK, this is a major problem at the moment. We privatise all our water firms and all of them have um, have been just doing whatever they want is you know. we've got a tribunal story here this is the story of Haley Thomas who was a female manager and she was she was she was claimed that her, her boss was bullying her and she was left feeling worthless and he said that she, that she would be the size of a house if she didn't stop eating here is the bully boss himself hey uh, this is Justin Ward who's one of the bully bosses and I've done it again and this is the other one Lee Taylor who's another of the bully bosses who who, who bullied the lady now the problem is, is there isn't a picture of her son I well, will never know she really would be the size of a house but she worked for TNR direct insurance in pool down in Dorset from March 2020 till she resigned in August 2022. But yeah, she was subjected to so many repeated jibes about her weight that she wouldn't eat her lunch, uh, she told an employment tribunal. And she took time off for her mental health and uh, two bosses, Justin Ward, Lee Taylor, would chat her demeanor or even ignore entirely the hearing heard. Uh, Miss Thomas, who represented herself at the Southampton hearing, said she was left feeling worthless after being given no meaningful support or assistance and they created an intimidating or hostile environment for her and it's all centred around abuse about her weight but they found in her favour yeah um, she got a total of 56,542 pounds it's uh, £24,000 in injury to feelings them feelings they're worth a lot of money and eight and a half thousand pounds in lost in lost earnings. No, so there you go. Um, afterwards, Miss Thomas said she was going to be spending all the money on pies. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. I was only joking. I'm sure she's very svelte. Or we could just say there's just more of her to love, couldn't we? But don't be remember, don't be morbidly obese, people, because it's not good. I want you to live a long, healthy life. That's why. Uh, uh, what else have we got? This is a really, sorry, I'm just reading this. This is a really stupid story, right? Um, uh, Rebecca McGonigal, who's a, a PhD student, she posted a picture on her social media, right? And all her pals started congratulating her for her surprise baby. And they ask, can you tell what's really going on? Yeah, it's her knee. It's her bloody knee. That doesn't look like a baby. Tell you, it's not a lot of stories here today. Not a lot of stories here. Uh, 
Trying to find a good story. Sorry, <laughs> I should really. <laughs> Can I do this one? No, I can't do that one either. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just. I'm, it, I should really. I should really go on the site before. Um, there's not a lot going on. It's really boring. It's really boring on here today, you know that. There's no funny stories. No funny stories. Uh, oh, here we go. Food news. Do you like Magnum ice creams? Who likes Magnum ice creams? My mum used to love Magnum ice creams, but they've been recalled. Unilever. They've slapped a do not eat warning on the Magnum almond ice lollies. Quite a quite fancy one now. But, but yeah, don't eat them, because they may, they may contain plastic and metal. These only affect the lollies with the batch codes there, um, dated best before date of the December 2025. So uh, no other Magnum products are affected. So check your fridge, check your fridge. We have an animal story there, which I can put over there for later. We'll do that later. Uh, do, do, do. Here you go. I found a new place. No, I haven't. It's far too small. But if you've got if you've got a stupid amount of money, and you like exclusivity, then a new property might be up for you. This this is a, a, a one of those seaside cabins. Right, there you go. Very nice, isn't it? And we're going to play guess the price. We're going to play guess the price. But I'm going to uh, again. It, it, this is all it, it isn't. It's not a lot to it. I mean, it's uh, you've got a kitchenette, and you can fit. I reckon you can fit eight people in there. Blimey, and this is where it is. All right, this is a ready a, a Mudford Sandbank in Christchurch in Dorset. So yeah, it's in Sandbanks in Dorset. There's another view. Do you want to guess how much that little chalet is worth? How much it's on the market for? And remember, right, it doesn't have a toilet. There's no toilet, so you'd have to go into the sea for a quick outdoor wee. Um, hut number 297 is on the market near Sandbanks in Dorset Again, for those of you outside the UK Sandbanks is a very very prestigious place to live it's where all the millionaires live what, what will I get what will I get for that how much no no not even close bit more bit more bit more hold it there We'll hold it there. That's your final guess. Yeah, £450,000 to live in a hut. You wouldn't live there. It's like a, meant to be like a holiday a holiday home. Um, but yeah. They reckon over the past 25 years, the value of the huts have skyrocketed. 
and one hit the market back in 2022 for a similar price so uh, but there you go so uh, if you fancy a little getaway and you've got more money than cents there you go and uh, This is one of those. Uh, this is one of those uh, stories from. You get these on the telly now and then. This is this is a mechanic from Arizona called Tim. He's from Scottsdale in Arizona, and he's on one of those shows where. Well, well, I, well, I don't know if you can. I'm going to show you his picture, and you could let me see if you could tell me. Tell me what might be his problem. Yeah, his nickname's Billy Bollockface. No, that isn't true. I just made that up. But he's got a 5.5-pound tumour growing out of his face. But he's got a sense of humour because he stuck some googly eyes on it. But it does look like a giant bollock, doesn't it? Am I allowed to say bollock? Yeah, I'm allowed to say bollock. <laughs> and uh, he feels like it's pulling his face off. And he goes to one of those, this is, uh, he goes to Dr. Osborne, who's, he's like, you could say, oh, don't get many of them to the pound. He's really enjoying it. He's really cupping, he's really cupping that tumour. And, um, and yeah, um, this is him afterwards. I successfully move it. This is on uh, TLC's Take My Tumour. What a great show. Take My Tumour. Of course, for many women, uh, that's it's divorce, isn't it? Take the tumor, it's divorce. Uh, talking of divorce, women share their infuriating behaviour that made them start to rethink their relationship. Okay, this is from Bored Panda. They've stolen this from Bored Panda. We're liberating it. We're liberating it. So we've got some pictures here of things that women have seen. That they've decided to share that's questions the nature of their relationship okay um i, I can't see the problem with this there's just some items on the floor what, what's what's wrong with that i don't get it again what's the problem they've, they've put a new toilet roll in haven't they i mean what's what what's the what's the problem what's the problem with that come on sometimes you need access to every drawer and cupboard when you're cooking don't you? Every drawer and cupboard. Or is it just me then? Um, I don't know if I agree with this. The, the guy, again, this has got to be fake. He t apparently took a, a bite out of each chocolate in order to find the caramel one. I, I don't know about that. Um, put emptied hummus containers back in the fridge. Why would you do that? And... Um, Put the peanut butter back with a knife still in it. Yeah, really. A collection of toilet rolls. Now, again, that could be one for the family. See, what, I, don't, I don't think you're looking at this right. I think they've got... This was from during COVID, and each member of the family was designated their own toilet roll. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Nuts. Uh, a woman asked her... <laughs> A boyfriend to bring some food home from the bar and he brought a container of monkey nuts <laughs> reasonable and uh, yeah instead of opening the orange juice or sort of pe orange peach mango juice from the the plastic top he's he's gone old style he's gone in old style and he's at the middle of the of the pecan pie I mean that's just that's evil that's a work of evil yeah, you've got to tidy up after yourselves. You've got to tidy up after yourselves. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what that is. That's a, di a, di a, di a dishwasher. Again, I'm not sure what a dishwasher is. But that's not how you load it, apparently. I don't know. We've got a... <laughs> That's perfectly really That's lived in. Look, you can see who's done it. You can see who's, who's behind that. Look, can you see? 
can you see behind that that fella there and uh, last picture you know look if you find my trim is in the sink it's not my fault they didn't wash down properly so there you go if you if you're thinking of 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 re of re you know re, re uh, appraising your relationship leave a comment in the comments box below you never do you never do um Meanwhile, we've got a f the story of Robert Fuchs. Him and his missus were renovating a uh, the kitchen in a newly bought 17th century cottage. He dug a a big hole with a pickaxe. So here are here are said couple. This is Betty and Robert Fuchs. They cottages in South Porton Farm in a hamlet near Bridport in Dorset. And when they was doing the work, as you can imagine, they were renovating and doing some digging. When they found, right, a cache of old coins, there ends up being uh, uh, 1,029 coins in total. And uh, yeah, they date back to 1621, 1623. There, that was a James I gold laurel coin. And there's also a Charles, Charles I gold unite coin. Uh, they they again, they put these coins up in auction. This is what it looked like when they found the cash. These are going up for auction. And those current coins alone could fetch £2,000 each. So, uh, is it solely when the auction? Oh, this is the this is the collection at the auction. There you go. And uh, the hoard was uh, when's it? It's been split into a hundred lots by Duke's auctioneers, and the sale will take place on April the twenty third. So, yep. There's going to be lots and lots and lots and lots of money making lots and lots of money. I believe. Uh, da, 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 what else have we got here? We've got um, we've got new footage. Of the um, you know the woman who went into the bank with a, a dead a dead uncle, yeah. We've got no new footage. I'm just hoping there isn't an advert. Uncle Paolo, do you remember she took him into the bank? And uh, come on, Daily Mail. Uh, doesn't want to work. Come on, you can do it. Here we go. Again, it's uh, CCTV footage. Yeah, I think he's still alive then, though. Because he's sitting more upright, and I'm sure I saw an arm move. Yeah, Uncle Paolo was still. This is uh, captured in Rio de Janeiro on April the fifteenth, at the uh, outside the emergency care unit in Bangu. Um, he was seen moving his head and waving his arm as the 42-year-old Sousa, that's uh, the lady who's uh, who tried to take him to the bank, 
Um, but yeah, he was alive the day before, so. According to uh, Brazilian newspapers, Braga entered the medical care on April the 8th and was discharged on the same day. But despite being discharged from the hospital alive and well, Suze was seen pushing the Braga's corpse to the bank teller's desk a day later. And that's when, uh, yeah, that's when she tried to get the loan. And uh, again, she's holding a pen. Come on, Uncle Paolo. Sign the form. So there you go. That's <laughs> just a little follow up to that. What the f yeah. <sighs> this is the story of an unnamed doctor, thought to be from Bangladesh, who um, was in uh, in London, and he's been searched for by the Met Police because he's offering a dangerous and experimental procedure that supposedly cures autism which involves injections into the brain apparently schools and nurseries around the country have been made aware of the purported fraud it ain't fraud it's bloody murder as well as several councils including Greenwich and Newham an advisory note for schools circulated by Nottingham Safeguarding Children Partnership stated the treatment the individual is proposing to undertake is procedural to prosper extraction and transfer of bone marrow or spinal fluid to a, a child's brain matter by injection it's a, an unlicensed procedure being touted as a miracle cure for autism and is being aimed at Bangladeshi and Asian communities oh my goodness absolutely shocking stuff um, no, that's not going to work. I wonder if they know who it is. They've not named him. And what else have we got? I've got, I've got a couple of animal stories here, which is good. Oh, yeah. I've got to show you this footage. This is Boston Dynamics. Um, they're famous for their robots. I don't know if you remember you've had that kind of dog robot. Well, they've got a new one out, which is called uh, Atlas 2, I believe. And I'm just waiting for this advert from in the Florida to, to go by because they've put in a 15 second ad on. A little clip so this is atlas 2 um it's like your nightmares have become real isn't it we've so, i've seen these movies uh so yeah that's their new their new robot Look, I always say thank you to uh, to Alexa and, and Siri. So I think I'm going to be all right when the AI and the robots take over. Not sure about you lot. You lot could be in trouble. Noisy adverts. Oh, creepy. Creepy stuff, isn't it? Don't like it. <laughs> Don't like how it folded out of itself. Anyway, what else have we got? Uh... Let's do the animal stories, shall we? We've got a couple of animal stories here. Um, we're going to Dubai. I don't know if you remember. It was um, well, there was a heavy, heavy rain storms in Dubai, and I'm waiting for this clip. And there's an advert, noisy advert for Matilda the Musical, apparently. But anyway, let's go to Dubai, where one little cat managed to uh, use up one of his nine lives. 
in the floods. He was hanging on, or she, was hanging on for dear life. And luckily was rescued by a boat. There we go. Poor Moggy's thinking, thank God for that. I'm out of here. But yeah, so uh, that was good news, wasn't it? Yeah, a police officer made his way through the water in a small inflatable dinghy, reached the pet, and then pulled it off the door and uh, took him off to rescue. And uh, here we go, there's a little still image of him thinking, crikey, that was lucky. So that's our first animal story. And um, now we're going to Australia. I'm just going to wait for the advert. I'll wait for the advert. There's going to be an advert. Oh, there isn't an advert. Oh, that's good. Come on, Daily Mail website. You can do it. Well, maybe you can't. Tell you, the video, the video playback on the Daily Mail website is getting worse. They have these adver they have this advertising thing that always seems to jam up the uh, video. Uh, TME distribution. I don't know what that is. Go away. Yeah, this is the story. Whoops, of Molly the magpie. Right, it went missing in Australia. You're probably thinking a magpie, but yeah, this magpie is um, well very friendly. It's a pet magpie, and the dogs are happy. Look, the dogs are happy to see. <laughs> Let's fast forward it. Here we go. Back home. There you go. Who'd, who'd have thought you could have a magpie as a pet? Mind you, Australian magpies look very different to ours, don't they? But yeah, Molly had gone missing for 45 days. And so everyone, including the dogs, were pleased to have her back. There you go. So yeah, Justine, uh, sorry, Juliet Wells and Reese Mortensen um, shared the news that Molly returned home. Uh, this is on the Gold Coast in Queensland. The the pet had been separated from the family for 45 days after being confiscated by wildlife authorities who said they were not permitted to keep a wild bird. Oh, okay. And Molly was returned following a nationwide outrage that led to the Queensland Premier personally intervening in the case. Uh, Miss Wells wrote on Instagram, Molly's first 24 hours has been uh, returned home. It's been wonderful for us. The three best friends have been enjoying the sun together. And here they are. But I didn't know you weren't allowed to keep a, a bird in Australia. So there you go, but it caused national outrage. How peculiar. Uh, Miss Wells and Mr. Watson rescued Molly as a baby in 2020 and started sharing the unlikely friendship with their two pet staffies on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. And the trio shot to stardom, attracting 2 million followers. That's where I'm missing out. I need a cute pet. No, she's not here. Um, so there you go. But they thought that Molly was female, but he's actually a male, and the name stuck. Um, but yeah, uh, they voluntarily surrendered Molly to Queensland's Department of Science, Environment and Innovation on March the 1st, after authorities found that they didn't have the required permit to care for native wildlife. But there was a battle with the government, and Molly was returned home. Well, there you go. Ah, oh, here they are. I think this is the thumbnail. I think this is the thumbnail for the video. <laughs> They're mimicking each other. How cool is that? Anyway, that's enough nonsense for today. It's pretty, pretty poor. Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty poor. Not very good. Not very good today. Whoops. Is anybody in? Uh seven people in god see everyone's just dying off they're bored with already pains in 
He said, I thought I'd say hello, because nobody else says. He said, uh, I'd, let, I'd have let the 60p bag fell off with a warning. I know what it's like to be tired after a night shift. Again, we all make mistakes, you know. And I think, uh, unless, again, unless he's been consistently doing it, I think the benefit of the doubt in that instance would have been perfectly reasonable, but zero tolerance policy apparently and so they found against him and that's the end of his career and it's silly isn't it really andrew says i'm in today and it's lovely sunny it's it's, it's nice sunny weather here too and Payne says i miss the days when the only weird club in school was the chess club chess club I, yeah I, I was in the chess club at, at, at um junior school and runs in he says hi high five andrew says wasn't there a song called Berkshire, Burke, yeah, possibly. Andrew says, yes, it was Southern Comfort. Uh, dog cam stories, yeah. And Andrew says, would make a nice studio indeed. And Oz is, and, and Dr. Oz says, hey, I'm Dr. Osborne. And Ron says, take my tumour, indeed. It's the, it's the show that everyone's going to be watching. And Renee says, good afternoon, good afternoon, Renee. And that is it, that is it. Nobody likes it, terrible one today pretty poor not very not very good it's not my fault it's uh it's the daily mouse fault anyway thank you for i really says sunny but a bit chill yeah it's blue skies here and there's a little bit of cloud but you know hopefully it's the wind isn't it it's cold wind if the wind drops it'll be very very nice anyway thank you for watching killing the channel one video at a time that was the news you know you have to drink out ta-ta